Now, I know what you're probably thinking when you saw the title of this video. Vince over on the Pleasant Kenobi channel has basically done every single possible iteration of Death and Taxes, and why would I even try and compete with his amazing videos about Death and Taxes? Well, I feel like it's just a really good deck to put into the Budget 2 Tier 1 series. So, we're going to talk about how you build a Budget Death and Taxes deck, and how you get it into Tier 1 territory. Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. My name is Adrian, and today we are doing another deck for the Budget 2 Tier 1 series. This is going to be video number three. If you haven't seen the last two, the point of the video, the point of this series, is to be showing you a budget deck such as this $90 or 12 tick Death and Taxes deck, and then showing you how you can upgrade it into the Tier 1 version of it that is going to be rolling in $460 or 120 ticks. Technically, this is actually going to be Eldrazi and Taxes that we're going to be moving into, not not necessarily an upgraded Death and Taxes, but they're, they're like the same, they're in the same variant, they're in like the same kind of category. And because I'm not a professional Magic player, as you may or may not know, I'm not just making a Tier 1 deck and saying, I made a Tier 1 deck, That's that doesn't make any sense. Actually, I'm pulling this deck from MTG Top 8, where it has done quite well in a medium to large tournament. Anyhow, enough with the chitty chatting talking, let's get into the actual deck Hacking. So, the first two cards, we have Avon Mind Sensor and Leonin Arbiter. Both of these cards are doing about the same thing. They are making it so our opponent can't search their library very effectively, which in modern, it's going to slow our opponent down, taking them off tempo. Leonin Arbiter is you basically have to pay two mana to actually search your library, and then Avon Mind Sensor is your opponent can only search the top four cards of their deck, not their entire deck, which is really, really funny. Now, we're going to play some specific cards that make these really good, such as Path to Exile and Ghost Quarter. Pet to Exile is really what makes the majority of the budget up in this deck, seeing how it is currently, as of recording this video, $7.68 each. Approximately one third of the budget is currently Path to Exile. Both of these cards destroy things and allow our opponents to search their libraries. Obviously, if we have a Leonin Arbiter or a Avon Mind Sensor, they don't get to do that unless they, well, they get to do it with limited case. Sometimes they're not going to do it, sometimes they're going to only do it with the first four cards. You get the idea. Now, Death and Taxes makes up other taxing type cards. We have Spirit of the Labyrinth, Thalia, Heretic Cather, and Vryn Wingmare. Now, all of these cards are what's referred to as tax cards. They make it so your opponent can't do things as effectively. Spirit of the Labyrinth makes it so players can't draw more than one card each turn. Thalia is basically just making it so creatures and non-basic lands come to play tapped. Again, putting them off tempo, that's the entire point of it. And then, Vryn Wingmare is essentially making it so your opponents can't cast non-creature spells as often, which there's a lot of non-creature spells currently in modern floating around, so making them pay two mana for it is really going to make people unhappy. I'm looking at Storm players. They're gonna be Storm players are gonna be very unhappy with this card when you play it. Next we have Thraben Inspector, Blade Splicer, and Fiend Hunter. All three of these cards are going to be our death side of this deck, because you need to have death and taxes, not just one or the other. Thraben Inspector is our ideal first turn play in this case. It allows us to investigate when it comes into play so we can actually crack this clue and draw a card, which is going to be really freaking fantastic. Blade Splicer, when it comes into play, or if we can manage to flicker this throughout its duration of its lifespan, creates a 3-3 colorless golem artifact creature token, and and Golem creature tokens we have have first strike as long as Blade Splicer is in play, so a little bit of an awesome combo there. And then lastly, we have Fiend Hunter, which when it comes into play, we get to exile another target creature, so it is our soft removal. And then if we can flicker it as it comes into play and this thing resolves, which we will be able to do technically, then that creature is gone forever. So really cool, but let's actually take a look at what those cards are that allow us to interact with all of these cards. We have Eldrazi Displacer and Flicker Wisp. Both of these cards make me as a player when I play Death and Taxes really happy. So Flicker Wisp exiles target permanent and then it gets returned at the end of the next turn, or end of this turn I should say. So if we play it on our turn, we exile a, a land or a blocker or one of our own things, and then it comes back at our end step. Additionally, with Eldrazi Displacer, as you might see what I'm trying to get at here, Eldrazi Displacer allows us to flicker a creature, so if at our end step we decide, hey, let's flicker a Flicker Wisp, we get to make our stuff, our opponent's stuff, or anything, whatever we want, go away for an entire turn, which is really, 
hilarious if you ask me. So these two cards working in tandem are really freaking powerful, which is why we have them in the deck. The next two cards we have are going to be Ghost Quarter and Seagate's Wreckage. These are going to be lands. Seagate's Wreckage as the one that actually is different here because Ghost Quarter we've already covered, it blows up a land. Seagate Wreckage is a little bit different though. Seagate Wreckage also providing us with colorless mana, which we do need for our Eldrazi Displacer. Additionally, we can also use it to draw cards. So that's really cool because if we run out of cards in our hand, we're out of abilities, we have no more stuff, we can now draw more cards, which is going to be a really good advantage point for us, especially because we can do this on our opponent's turn. If we have a Spirit of the Labyrinth in play, we can still draw that extra card. The last three cards we have are all lands as well. They're going to be Shafet, Dunes, Plains, and Wastes. So Plains and Wastes, obviously, we need those to play stuff as normal, but our Dunes card is allowing us to make it so creatures we control get plus one plus one until end of turn. It is a, essentially a buff spell for us, and it also produces colorless mana so we can actually activate our Eldrazi Displacer when and where that is necessary. At this point, I'm going to talk about the sideboard, but I'm not going to talk about it in any real detail because the sideboard will always change depending on what is currently happening in the meta. We have Brenton Forge Tender, Declaration in Stone, Core Firewalker, Sundering Growth, Sunlance, and Tormod Script. This will deal with a majority of the stuff you're going to run up against, so feel free to build this if you're going to go to an FNM. And that is the entire deck. If you want to pick this deck up in paper or any deck on the channel for that matter, go over to Flipside Gaming, use promo code GIANTMONSTERGAMES to get 10% off your online purchase. Or if you want to buy this deck on MTGO, there's a link below to Card Hoarder where you can quickly pick up this entire deck fast and easy. Also, both of these help with the channel directly so I can keep making videos just like this for you guys. And now it is time to talk about the upgraded version of this deck. That is right, we're going to be moving into an Eldrazi and Taxes build. What are we going to be using? What are the big changes? Well, the first major change is Aether Vial. Aether Vial is like the lifeblood of the tempo-based world decks. Death and Taxes really, really, really want Aether Vial. Especially when we're playing a Flicker Wisp, because we can play it at instant speed and flicker our opponent's stuff, and our stuff, or anything's at instant speed, which is fantastic. So Aether Vial is the first major upgrade. Next, we have some way better tax cards. We have Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, Thought Not Seer, and Shaylai, Voice of Plenty. Now, all three of these cards are just, well, I guess Shaylai is technically not a better tax card, but Thalia is a really good tax card because she makes it so everything costs a little bit more if it is not a creature, which is really popular. Currently, there's a lot of removal and a lot of, like, non-creature spells in modern right now that we need to kind of just tell our opponent, hey, slow down a bit. You don't have to rush. It's still a game. Thought Not Seer is essentially ripping our opponent's hand apart. We get to exile a card in our opponent's hand. When Thought Not Seer dies, our opponent gets to draw a card. Well, actually, when it dies, when it leaves play. So if we flicker with this guy, our opponent gets to draw a card, and then when it comes back, we get to then remove another card, which is really, really fun. I quite love this. Additionally, it is also a 4-4 beater, so it is really good at making our opponent's face look like... kind of a little bit like the Thought Not Seer's face, to be honest. It's... That's kind of its its main objective in life. And then Shaylai, Voice of Plenty, is essentially just giving all of our stuff hexproof, which is really cool. It's actually a brand new addition to the Death and Taxes deck, and I've been loving it. Next, we have some black, because we're also going to be shifting it a little bit of black with the Eldrazi and Taxes deck. We have Tide Hollow Sculler and Wasteland Strangler. These two cards work in their own little synergy pocket over here, so Tide Hollow Sculler gets to remove a card from our opponent's hand as long as it is in play, and then Wasteland Strangler gets to take that card from exile, put it into your opponent's graveyard, and kill a creature usually. And then your opponent doesn't get that card back if they do kill Titolo's Color, which is really, really funny. Uh, additionally, Wasteland Strangler can also get rid of a lot of other things if we have something that has been exiled with Thought Not Seer or our Flicker Wisp or other cards. We can grab those cards and prevent them from coming back into play. And then we do have some lands that are going to be an upgrade to this deck. We have Caverns of Koilos, Concealed Courtyard, and Shambling Vents. So, Cavern Spoilos is providing us with colorless mana, which is super important for the deck. Additionally, providing us with white and black mana. Concealed Courtyard is providing us with fast mana, which is always really nice. And then Shambling Vents is a creature land, if we ever need a creature. Sometimes it is relevant, especially because it has lifelink. 
the last three lands we have to make this deck a little bit different. We have Mutavault, Eldrazi Temple, and Godless Shrine. So, Godless Shrine provides us with black and white mana. Pretty simple. Eldrazi Temple and Mutavault provide us with colorless mana, slash Mutavault is a land that turns into a creature, which is always fun. And then Eldrazi Temple gives us two colorless mana if we're casting an Eldrazi spell. Surprise, surprise, surprise. This deck is called Eldrazi and taxes for a reason. We have Eldrazi in the deck. So, those are going to be all the cards for the upgraded deck, but at this point, I would like to jump over and talk about specifically what are we upgrading card for card to make this into a tier one deck, because that is an important thing. To start out with the first and probably the most important one of this entire deck for if you're going to upgrade a little bit is going to be Eldrazi Displacer and Thalia Guardian of Thraben. Both of these cards are really important and really strong in a Death and Taxes deck. You're going to be pulling out the Vryn Wingmare and the Avon Mind Sensor. The Vryn Wingmare, as you can probably see with Thalia Guardian of Thraben, is just a worse version of Thalia, so you just kind of remove that. Avon Mind Sensor, well, it is good and it does do a lot of awesome taxing to us. The Eldrazi Displacer is actually going to be better because we have a lot of things we would like to flicker to get extra value, so Eldrazi Displacer, definitely a better upgrade in that case. The next upgrade, and it is an expensive one, is going to be Aether Vial and Shalai Voice of Plenty. I know Aether Vials are not cheap, they're like $35 each, but they make this deck amazingly competitive because your opponent can't respond as easily because you are going to be playing stuff for free and at instant speed. So you're going to be able to flicker with stuff at instant speed, you're going to be able to kill things at instant speed, you're going to be able to create 3-3 three, three golem creatures at instant speed. Aether Vial is really freaking good and I highly recommend it. Additionally, as well as I was saying, Shalai, Voice of Plenty is also really freaking good and it's going to be, it's just in the same category as this. The things you're going to take out is going to be Spirit of the Labyrinth and our last Avon Mind Sensor. Next we have Thought Not Seer, which is going to be replacing Fiend Hunter. Pretty simple upgrade here, it's just a better win condition. The next cards, and this is going to have to come with a bunch of land upgrades for you, it is going to be Tide Hollow Sculler and Wasteland Strangler. Now obviously you want to be putting these two guys in together because that is going to mean you're going to upgrade your mana base at the same time. You're going to be pulling out at least three of the Blade Splicers and all of the Thraben Inspectors. Thraben Inspector is really good at drawing us cards, but ideally in a Death and Taxes strategy, we want to actually put our opponent off tempo. So removing stuff out of our opponent's hand, especially stuff that is important to our opponent winning, uh, we kind of want to get rid of. As I was saying though, you need to upgrade your mana base, so what are we going to take out? Well, we're going to take out a whole bunch of planes, like a lot of planes. And we're going to be putting in Caverns of Koilos, Concealed Courtyard, Godless Shrine, and a Shambling Vent. Obviously, planes go out, all of these things come in. And the last upgrades to the mana section, you're going to be putting in all four Eldrazi Temple, a single Mutavault, and a single Swamp. You can be taking out all three of the Seagate's Wreckage. They are nice, but they're not good enough because we'd rather be explosive. And then you can take out two of the dunes. We don't need all three of them. One is actually probably all we really need. And then we can take out that last waste. And that is the entire budget to tier one death and taxes, or death and taxes into Eldrazi and taxes, technically. If you want to see me play this deck, I'm going to go play some games. They're going to start out with me playing the budget version of this deck and then moving into a not so budget version of this deck because I do enjoy it and I have almost all the cards in MTGO. So let's do that. Until next time, my name is Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games, thanks for watching, and don't forget to game like a giant monster. I would like to throw a huge shout out to all of the Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome, and helping make videos like this possible on the channel, thanks for being a backer, I seriously can't thank you guys enough, you are so freaking awesome.